Hey, everybody, this is Stephen O. Young from Apple TV's For All Mankind. Also, Mr. Negative from Spider-Man PS4. I'm just hanging out with Elias on the Man Cave. Welcome to another episode of the Man Cave Chronicles. Welcome to the party, pal! You're my boy, bro! Yo, it! it! A podcast with interviews of amazing guests from the world of pop culture. Oh, yeah! TV. Nice! Movies. Oh, I love the movies. Comedy and more. From deep inside the Man Cave, your host, Elias. Steven, welcome to the cave. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be in the case. How are you, man? What's new with you? Uh, I'm good, man. Uh, what is new with me? Well, let's see. Just died. I'm always dying. I'm like the Sean Bean of Asian American actors. Dying and everything. So, yeah, man. <laughs> let's see. Yeah. <laughs> so, you've been busy the last few years, huh? You've done numerous TV show appearances. You've done movie appearances. You've also did the, right. You also did the voiceover for Mr. Negative on Marvel's Spider-Man, which was a huge game for PlayStation. It and was if, amazing and a great experience, yeah, yeah and absolutely. A, and, and now you you have a recurring role for, for All Mankind on Apple TV+. Plus. That's right, yeah. yeah. So I play an astronaut, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a great experience. And before, so after that, what did I do? What, what was I into? Uh, Terminator got killed in that, the most recent one. Yeah, man, it's been a busy year. <laughs> I, I'm very thankful. Yeah, we'll, we'll Sometimes def- I forget. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about those. Uh, let's start yeah. off with, uh, let's the listeners get to a little bit more about you. Where are you originally from? Uh, well, I was born in Rockford, Illinois, a sleepy little town. My parents are from China. They moved from China to Taiwan. And then from there, they went to, like, uh, obviously, they emigrated to uh, the Midwest in the 70s. And so that's why... I was born in Rockford, and then we came out to California when I was, like, three. Um, and so I've been a Southern California boy pretty much my whole life, wow. living in uh, Cerritos. We're very famous for our auto square. Cerritos auto square. <laughs> very, uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, so I just grew up out in Southern California, just kind of doing the very normal, boring Southern California thing. And then, like, when I graduated from college, I went to UC San Diego. Um, I was either going to be like a, I was going to try to be a web designer or maybe go into politics because I like to talk and I'm very egotistical. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. (laughs) And then I was like, well, but you know, growing up, I also liked acting all the time. So I was like, you know, we're here. We are literally in the, you know, Los Angeles, the capital, the entertainment capital of the world. Uh, people move from all over the world to try. Uh, I might as well give it a go. And my father and mother at the time were very supportive. Um, they said, like, you know, just do what you would do for free. That's probably what you should do in your life. So I was like, oh, you know, if I got their blessing, I can at least try this and fall on my fall on my butt, you know, fail. Or, you know, even if I fail, at least I tried. So that, that's where, yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> so you said uh, you were you were kind of like getting into acting when you were a kid. Was there a, a certain movie or TV show that you were watching and you're like, yes, this is what I want to go do someday? Oh, man. I mean, I remember watching uh, literally terrible TV shows on, for us, it was Channel 5, something called Street Hawk. It was like Knight Rider, but with a motorcycle. And obviously I also loved uh, I also loved Knight Rider and I loved Airwolf. So I was, I was watching TV like all the time. I remember every summer I'd get a big bag of Skittles and just like go through in one sitting this giant, probably man-sized bag of Skittles until I was sick. Uh, and that was my, uh, you know, and watch TV for the entire day. That was the first day of summer. And that was like a ritual that I would do. So TV was always very important to me. And then I just remember watching Star Wars. Like my brother, um, he had a VHS copy that he had copied off of a televised broadcast from CBS of the first Star Wars, A New Hope. And I I remember him showing it to me when I was maybe five or six. And he was like, you're going to love this. And I was like, what? What is this? And he puts it in. And it's Star Wars, and it's amazing. And I watch it, and at the end, all I could think of, I was mad because I was like, you've been holding that 
out on me for, for how long? This movie is amazing. Yeah. I didn't know that there were sequels, too, right? Yeah. So every year he'd come out and you're like, you're going to love this. So then he'd pop, he'd pop in Empire Strikes Back, and I'd be like, well, where's the other one, you know? And then finally he would he brought out the third one, and I was like, you've been holding out on me this whole time, man. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was a great time in my life. <laughs> you mentioned the uh, recording it off the TV, and it's like it brought back memories of me and my brother because that's how exactly how we watched those movies back then also. And it's like – right. And I remember, do you remember how you have to like watch it and you have to fast forward the commercials and now we're spoiled exactly. you have to skip the commercials exactly. and everything. Exactly. Yes, these kids. Look, all the kids are going to be like, "Okay, boomer," but it's true. Like yeah. we had VHS yeah. and you had to fast forward through all of it. And then if you watched it too many times, obviously your tape would uh, have damage to it. It's hilarious. Yeah. Good times. So after college, uh, we'll push you to the next level. What did you? How did you get into the acting world? Oh well, so. I, uh, well, I always loved martial arts too, right? So growing up, I loved to do a couple things. I loved to draw and I loved to do like martial arts. But my father, who was a martial artist himself, wouldn't let me train martial arts until I was much, much older. He was like, he basically had a rule. He was like, after, co- like, after high school, you can start, right? I don't know why, but uh, that's, so, that's what happened, right? So once I went into college, I was like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing martial arts. And right around that time is when the matrix came out too, the first one. Right. Yeah. So it was like perfect time. Uh, Wushu Kung Fu from China was coming in, you know, all the wire work stuff. Uh, Crouching tiger was huge. So right around that time, all these Chinese martial artists from Beijing Wushu team, which is Jet Li's Wushu team. Right. They had come over to America because they were like trying to make it in America too. And so, it was like perfect timing for me to start uh, my wushu training. So when I went to college at UC San Diego, I was like the one guy who was down to learn w- this new sport of wushu, which is just kung fu, but like mixed with ballet, I guess. You know, it's like movie yeah. kung fu, right? It was like nobody knew back then. So I was like the one guy on campus. I went to the one school that had opened where the one guy from China had come over. Right. And uh, I mean, I had a couple of teachers come over from China and that's where I started learning really, really heavy. I had already had a little bit of experience from my father training me in like judo and, uh, you know, Chinese wrestling, Swai Jiao. Uh, But, you know, my real training started in college. So then I was pretty good at the time mostly because probably there's not a whole lot of competition. So I was like, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good on it. So, and, uh, you know, also if you're an Asian American kid, most of the times, what do we want to grow up as, as guys? Like most of us want to be Bruce Lee. Yeah. So I loved watching Bruce Lee stuff growing up too, uh, in addition to star Wars and all that stuff. But so I had these delusions of grandeur. I, you know, and I'd already done acting in high school. You know, I was a class clown. Right. So, it was like putting it all together. I was like, okay, well, I want to be the next Bruce Lee. Like, we all want to be the next Bruce Lee, right? Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to train super hard. I'm going to go become the next Bruce Lee. So I trained super hard in martial arts all throughout college. Then after college, I, I went to China for a couple of years and like uh, off and on, right? And trained at, in Beijing as well. And like, that was going to be my thing, man. I was yeah. going to be Bruce Lee. I don't know how I was going to do it, but I was just going to do it. And then when I came back and was like, all right, well, I'm going to be Bruce Lee. How do I get into the business? It, it was like impossible. You know, this is like 2003, four, five, six, right? Yeah. It's like, what do we do? I didn't have an agent. I didn't know anybody. Uh, I didn't know how to get in. So uh, I just started basically auditioning anywhere I could. So I was doing like little live things for free here and there, community theater. And finally I got a job at, this place called pirate dinner adventure, which is like, uh, like medieval times, but with pirates. Right. Yeah. And I remember the night that they had come over, that company had come over, they had bought the building next to medieval times. And I don't, you know, I didn't know how to ride a horse back then. Uh, I didn't know how to do anything. So I always wanted to be like, well, maybe I could be a knight. Well, I couldn't do that. But right next door, there was pirates. They're opening. And I remember my mom drove me to the, to the building. Right. And I was like, just looking outside and being like, I'm going to work here, damn it. And uh, they had this audition where like 100 people showed up, 
you know, I was part of the first batch of people that got hired. I was like the only Asian guy that they hired, you know, of course, cause I was doing sword stuff. So that was cool. And then, uh, I worked there for a couple of years. And then from there I started working at Disneyland as well. I was like, Oh, there's like live show stuff. Right. So that whole world kind of opened up to me. And then in there, all these people were doing stunts, you know, like real stunts in movies and TV shows. In fact, one of the dudes who was our fight coordinator from pirates, his name Dave Morzo, and he's like big time in TV fighting. He trained Jennifer Garner and Alias and all that stuff. So that I realized, like, oh, there's a whole world uh, of film that you can get into besides acting, but it's close enough. And so maybe if I try to do that, I can get into it. So I started doing stunts professionally uh, while I was trying to get into the acting thing. And, uh, man, I was, I was doing that for many, many years and it's kind of been in the past, uh, five or six years where the acting stuff finally is like hitting for me. Yeah. Uh, whereas before it was mostly just let me be Asian bad guy number five and get beaten up by Jason Statham, which is cool, but it's like my dream was to be an actor, right? Yeah. Not get, not get like beaten up by, by the A-listers. So, um, Luckily, my career has kind of shifted and evolved, and that is how I got into the business. Mm -hmm. Now, you said your your father didn't want you to start that till like you were in college. How come uh, he didn't want you to train when you were younger? Man, I think he just either didn't want me to. Uh, I think it really what it was is he didn't want me to get like uh, either hurt or stunt my growth huh. uh, or or get like overly aggressive he probably knew that i was pretty cocky so he was like let's not give this kid some dangerous tools <laughs> yet <laughs> so this is all good though yeah so I'm, what, I'm a humbled out now so when you got out in the field though what was your first gig that you landed do you remember oh like yeah uh, so let's see oh you know my first big gig right was uh i was doubling dev patel on the greatest movie ever made called The Last Airbender. Oh my God. That was, <laughs> I thought I had made it. I was like, yes, we, I had won the lottery. Well, I had won the lottery because, you know, to get on any team like that, it was, at the time, it was a huge movie. We thought it was going to be amazing. It, it was like a spectacular experience. And filming it was great. I learned a whole lot about, you know, film fighting. Uh, I learned how to work with the stunt team. I basically cut my teeth just on that movie. You know, I was out in Philadelphia for six, seven, and maybe eight months, something like that, doing the prep, filming the thing, training the actors, uh, doing all that stuff. So yeah. I learned everything from there. That gave me a huge basis. And then I met so many people who became my, my friends in the stunt industry who then were able to, I was able to work with them on other projects. So that was like the first big one. But boy, when that movie came out, like it was heartbreaking to see the critical reception, the fan reception. I thought I would never work again, you know? <laughs> Frankly, yeah. we should probably edit this part of the conversation now because I only want to be known as a winner. But yeah, we all have yeah. things on our resume, you know? So I did some research. Uh, you also, you trained the uh, Keanu Reeves and Denzel Washington. Like how, tell us about the experience with that. Oh yeah, so I worked on another movie called 47 Ronin. Yeah. And I went out and originally I was supposed to double Ken Watanabe, but he pulled out. So, uh, but the coordinator of that movie was very kind to keep me on. And so I basically was part of the fight team and I helped, uh, train him, you know, in sword work at the time already he had, he's, he's very good at martial arts just in general because of the matrix. And now with John wick, he's like on another level back then that was before John wick. So we were training him in traditional Japanese sword fighting choreography and like all the stories are true he is the nicest dude that was my next question and a heart all the videos oh, yeah. all the videos you see online it's like how nice is this guy he is the nicest dude he's quiet he's unassuming but he looks you in the eye he remembers your name he's very cool and especially in fighting a lot of the times you know um he's very considerate in the fighting right he doesn't actually want to hurt anybody and he rarely makes a mistake where somebody would get hurt or a misstep, you know? So that was a joy. Um, 
And then training Denzel and doing the fight choreography for the, the first equalizer was pretty fantastic as well because Denzel obviously is a god amongst actors, right? So I was able to watch him and I learned a lot about performance from him, uh, just how to be in your own body, you know, and how to be cool without pushing it, right? He's just cool wherever he goes. Same thing with Keanu. Yeah. Those guys just have like an effortless energy about them, which is spectacular. And then in fighting and in action, like they don't rush. They do what they do, which is a huge lesson for me to learn. Uh, like stars do what stars do. They do it on their own time. You know what I mean? Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. So it was nerve wracking though, to work with Denzel because he's very intense. Hmm. You know, he's a nice guy too, a gentleman all the way, yeah. but there's just, there's this aura about him where you're just like, Oh man, this guy's intense. So out of all like those TV shows and films you've worked with, what's been your favorite you think? Oh man. Well, honestly, Mr. Negative for Spider-Man is my favorite because that was probably one of the first times uh, that I, they, like when Insomniac and Sony hired me, I thought they were going to change the character. I thought they weren't even going to use my face. Uh, but they just really liked me. And I was very humbled that it was me. It was my choices. And they really gave me a lot of creative leeway in just how to be and how wow. to portray the guy. Yeah. And then, you know, all the fighting and stuff, they gave me leeway to do all that too. It was, it was probably, yeah, my finest hour. Mm. So I feel I, like every, every part of that is me. So how, how, did, how did you get involved with the, like, a voiceover for video games? Oh, well... Honestly, it was just through auditioning. It was just through my manager. I had auditioned for a couple other video games before that, um, a couple other VO things as well. But Spider-Man was my first big win. Hmm. I had done a lot of motion capture, and I still do, uh, with companies like Blur or, you know, Blur, which does, uh, with Tim Miller, director Tim Miller, he does, uh, he did Deadpool and the latest Terminator, but yeah. his company did all these cinematics for like, uh, Elder Scrolls, um, gosh, you name it. They've probably done a cinema. Oh, all the Star Wars games, right? Yeah. They do a lot of the cinematics that, that, you know, we know and love. And I was very fortunate to be brought on early in the game to do a lot of those cinematics, especially the Star Wars ones. Um, through my buddy Phil Silvera, who's the stunt coordinator on that, and I was able to perform. And so I knew the mocap world, right? But I, Spider-Man was the first time where it was like I was cast as a character. They used my face. They scanned me. They used my voice. Not only did they use my movement, but they did not use my acting as well. Um, and that was a great time, too, because it was like a three-year period of filming. Oh, wow. So as, Yeah, so as an actor, it's like you get to live with this character for that long. Whereas with a lot of projects that we do, we're like cowboys, you know, in terms of we ride in on the day, we film it and we're done. And then you never think about that character, or that role again. But this one, I could I lived with it for, for that long. So I think it shows up, though. Yeah. How was it doing the motion captioning with like, uh, you know, with all those wires on you and like trying to do stunts and filming? Oh, yeah. Well, you know. Anytime, yeah, that's the funny thing about motion capture, right? It's like, I don't even think of it as weird. Like, other people see, like, oh, you have all these reflective balls on you, you have the, the Velcro suit, you have all that stuff, right? Like, I think I've done it for so long, I'm just like, yeah, it's just second nature. Um, it is actually very liberating. Like, yes, when you're doing anything with wires, anything, even in motion capture, uh, anything with wires is going to be complicated uh, just because of the wires, right? Yeah. But uh, everything outside of that, it's like actually very liberating because you don't have to worry about camera angles. You don't have to worry about different setups. Uh, we shoot so fast and so many things when you're doing mocap that it's the closest thing to probably being in a play uh, as you can get. Only you're doing it you know, 
on a movie or you're doing it for a video game. So it's there forever. So it's like, for me, I feel like it's the best of all worlds. Hmm. From like the diehard video gamers, do you get recognized for that role? I find, yeah, I yeah. actually have, which is pretty amazing. And again, humbling. There's a couple of times on set where I'll be walking and, you know, uh, PAs or ADs will come and they'll, they'll be like, Steven. And I'll be like, I'll think they're talking to me because, you know, we're working on the day, but you know, then they'll, they'll come and they'll say, Hey man, I love your video game. I love Spider-Man and you know, you're great or whatever. And a lot of times people also kind of look at me funny and go, are you, are you the guy? <laughs> Cause they, they don't really know. Right. It's yeah. not a hundred percent translation. So like they wonder, and then they ask me and then, you know, I, I'm able to actually say yes. But, mm. uh, the funniest time was when I went to an audition like last year and a guy was walking past me uh, and you know, he's my competition basically. And I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm like, are you trying to like big dog me, try to intimidate me before this audition? And in my head, I was like, how dare you? I'll show you. <laughs> he passes me. And then he turns around. And he's like, Steven. And I, I'm like, uh, and you know, I, I, I'm like, Oh, he knows my name. So I turn around I'm like, yes, like big smile. And he's like, I love you and Spider-Man. And all of a sudden, you know, all my negative energy, hilarious, ironically, was like gone. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate that. He probably had no, he might have known that I was like staring daggers at him, but I was last. So now when people look at me, I go, okay, don't freak out. Cool. It's all good. Don't be intense. <laughs> and now you star on Apple TV Plus for all mankind. Tell us about that. That's right. So for all mankind, that was like also another dream project. Uh, I'm in three episodes, uh, and I play Harrison Liu, who is an astronaut, also a family man, married. Uh, I'm part of the crew that is uh, sent in order to rescue Joel Kinnaman, basically, who's stranded on the moon. Uh, that was an incredible experience because it's Ronald Moore, right, who I love Battlestar Galactica. So... When I auditioned for this role, uh, I already knew his world. And my dream role actually is kind of to be like a Spock or a Sulu, right? Where you're just yeah. you're doing a space show. Like, how cool is that? So this was kind of a dream come true. Huh. For my, my only regret is that like, I wish I had more episodes. Yeah. But that's every actor, right? Yeah. So course. yeah. How did you uh, yeah. tell us about your audition for the show? And did you know what you were auditioning for when you went there? Oh man. Yeah. So I knew what I was auditioning for. I knew it was a Apple plus show. I knew it was Ronald Moore. I didn't know, you know, outside of that, what the story was. I knew they were in space. So I was like, all right, you know, I, it's to be an astronaut. So my scene, I believe was pretty simple. We were doing a training exercise. Right. And in the scene, something goes wrong with the computers. And so you just supposed to play that scene. OK, but uh, unfortunately, I, I had like, I don't know, it was food poisoning or something or I was nervous. So like right before the audition, I was like pretty sick and I was kind of nervous about that because I was like, oh, God, like, I don't know if I'm going to hurl all over these people, <laughs> but thankfully like right before the audition all of a sudden like everything in my body was just like suck it up steven you're gonna do this damn thing be a professional which i think was in keeping with the character as well yeah i was like right right i'm just gonna be a professional so i was like all right just suck it up go in there be intense uh and you know i went in and just powered through the thing and uh got the role wow. there it is so how would you describe Harrison and what kind of research did you do for the role after you got it? Uh, Harrison is, you know, Harrison is very close to me, right? He is a professional. He knows how to do the job, but he's also got it like a kind of a sarcastic sense of humor right under everything he says. He's a little bit of a smart ass. So on that score, I was just like, okay, this is me. I can, I can do this. And as far as the preparation goes, I figured he's military. I figure he's, because most of these astronauts are either military or something like that. They live in that world. Uh, and I'm very familiar with that. Like one of my mentors in stunts is a ex Navy SEAL and just doing stunts all for so many years. 
uh, really inculcated into me this idea of hierarchy and, you know, how to behave in, in a certain way in a rigid system, but also under stress, right? So I feel like all of that kind of uh, was put into the character. And so for me, I really gravitated towards the just military pilot aspect. I was like, okay, he's a pilot, he's military, uh, I can do this. So as far as like other things, watching other people, I mean, Apollo 13, yeah. uh, I watched that like a million times growing up too. Great and so movie. I just pop that bad yeah so i just exactly so i just pop that bad boy back on too because there's a certain way that astronauts communicate to each other as well and even when we were on set we had uh like a consultant actually who kind of reminded us all that you know they were like astronauts uh don't speak like super loud super fast very dramatically they, they, you know they take their time but they're very clear and they're very precise and they are very in control of their emotion when they're on the mission because you have, you know, all, all these crazy buttons, knobs, whatever. It's no time to be going nuts with anything, right? It's like you have to be a professional. So uh, on that score, I really enjoyed that as well because um, generally in my real life, I, I can be pretty loud and uh, boisterous. <laughs> so it's fun to kind of play something that's a little – that's the opposite of that. How, uh, how fun was it putting that astronaut suit on? You know, I had the, a great time. A lot of people were not enjoying it because it's like, I forget how heavy it is, 80 pounds or something like that. But I just, I loved every second of putting that suit on. Um, uh, the suit is super bulky. And I think we were using some leftover or, or like modified suits from uh, Ryan Gosling's movie, First Man. So I was like, oh, maybe I'm wearing Gosling suit. I don't think I was. But uh, yeah, like it was incredible. It was so impressive. I thought that they were real suits. I mean, they looked that real. All the knobs, all the, the material felt, I mean, I've never seen a, I've never touched a real space suit in my life, but I figured it was. But uh, it turns out they were made for the show. Uh, and yeah, like putting on the helmet. I think that was the only uncomfortable part because uh, the helmet is actually super, it's actually smaller than you think it is. It just fits barely over your head. So it was like cramming sardines into a can. Um, but other than that, it was great. They hooked us up to oxygen. For me, it was very comfortable. I was, I was very cool. Mm. Did you know that the show was going to be on Apple TV plus when you first got it? Oh, I did. Yeah. And for me, I was, uh, yeah. And I was very excited and nervous because, you know, it's the first batch of shows. Yeah that Apple is putting out and they must have spent, uh, you know, a billion dollars uh, creating this content. So for me, it was a very mm, on, I felt very honored to be a part of uh, the first shows, you know? Yeah. And how great is it that they're, you can't binge watch them unless you buy the package like later on. You have, yeah, to, you have exactly. to wait every, every exactly. week for that episode. Exactly. So now they're going a little old school, right? Exactly. They're going a little old school yeah. that you have to watch it every week, yeah. but I don't mind. Keep the suspense going. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with Disney plus is doing the same thing. We have to wait every week for the new star Wars uh, episode to come out. Yes, exactly. That's the, uh, that's the other thing I have my eye on is like, all right, Disney plus coming for you. <laughs> Mandalorian season two. Let's do this. Let's get that audition for that. Yeah. I uh, well, so out of out of all the TV shows, like I said earlier, in the movies, what is like one moment that you're always like, man, that was a great time. Like, is, do you have like a favorite moment that you like? Oh gosh, let's see. I mean, honestly, it's such a cliche to say. Every show that I'm on, I feel great. I have a great moment. I mean, let's let's think about it. One moment that I thought was really cool was uh, when we were in the capsule for first man, we were doing zero G right. And it's like, how do you simulate zero G? You can either go in or you could do, you could go in one of those planes or you could do wire work, but the capsule is so small that they didn't have any room for that. So what they did, they put us on seesaws, right? Literally seesaws and floated us up and down on these seesaws. And for me, that was like, very that was a cool experience to be in the suit to be in the capsule 
and like floating up, pushing these buttons that I don't even know what they do. Uh, for a moment, I was like, okay, I, I've been watching, you know, Apollo 13 growing up. I'd watched all these space movies all my life. Now I'm finally in it. I think the capsule that we even used was a real space capsule from one of the Apollo missions. Oh, wow. I just thought, this is surreal. And then, of course, like, Joel Kinnaman is like, you know, he's on set in the wings waiting to do his scene. I just thought, I'm a huge fan of his, too. So I was just like, my God, this is, like, very, very surreal. I, I fanboyed out there. Um, and then as far as, like, again, my favorite job, obviously, I think, was Spider-Man. So yeah. I think one of the best days I had on Spider-Man was our subway sequence where – Mr. Negative finally gets to beat up Spider-Man a little bit. And I remember, you know, coming up with fight and just telling them like, Oh, well, what if he does this? And, uh, now, you know, what if I give him like two punches here and just knock him down? And I just remember filming that sequence. And I was like, I am literally fighting Spider-Man. Uh, that was a surreal moment too. Like I never in a million years would have thought that that would be possible. Hmm. So, you mentioned earlier how, like, you know, one of your, like, roles that you – that you did your sci-fi role and everything. Do you have, like, a dream role that you want to play someday? Is there another role that you, like, you hope you Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Star Wars is always one of them, yeah. right? Um, I've done so many Star Wars characters, like, in the video games, in the uh, – I, I was, like, a stormtrooper in Rogue One. Um <laughs> I helped train Adam driver in his a, a saber work for force awakens. Uh, but if I could be like an actual on film or on the Mandalorian or something like a bounty hunter yeah. or something where it's like, they see it's Steven and they see that he's doing either lightsaber stuff or he's doing cool bounty hunter stuff. I think that would be yeah. my ultimate dream job for sure. Yeah. And then after that I would retire yeah. because I think you just, yeah. Who knows? Maybe you get cast in one of those uh, movies or shows and then they kill you on it, like you always say. I, yeah. Here's the thing. I'll take that too. I'll take that too. I'll take that. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever I can get. Yeah. You know? Hey, how many people exactly. can, how, how many people can say, hey, I was at a Star Wars movie, but I, I got killed on it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like yeah. I said, I'll take what I can get. Beggars yeah. can't be choosers, you know? Yeah. And your downtime when you're not working, what do you enjoy doing? On uh, my downtime. Well, honestly, what do I join doing that? Well, now uh, I'm like super into comparative mythology. I'm going to sound like a nerd. So I love reading uh, Dune as my favorite series of books. I'm rereading Dune. And right now I'm just reading. I'm like going through all of Joseph Campbell's works. It's like so boring, right? I should be talking about how I work out or I go do something exciting. But that's literally my life. Yeah. I, I read Huffington Post. I read the news, right? Because I love the news, and I read about mythology, and I read Dune. That's kind of what I've been doing lately. Yeah. Do you uh, any future projects that you can talk about? Future projects? Uh, well, I'm auditioning for a bunch of stuff, but uh, nothing's really doing so. Oh, uh, I think maybe I, I just shot an episode of uh, Seal Team. So I'm in that. That's coming out, I believe, this month. Uh, let's see. What else? I did a little – I worked a little bit on this new show called Underground Railroad that is uh, made by Barry uh, Jenkins, who won the Oscar for Moonlight. So I went out to Atlanta for that. As far as some other stuff, I got to think. I mean, I think there might be some video game stuff that's out there. I don't know. <laughs> Next time I'll do better research on my own yeah. work. <laughs> and uh, lastly, how can the listeners find you on social media? Oh, you can check me out on my Instagram, Stephen O. Young. That's S T E P H E N O Y O U N G. People on set are always misspelling my name. It's either Steve <laughs> O. Young or Stephen Young. Yeah. It's Stephen O. Young. That's on Instagram. And then Twitter as Mr. Stephen O. Young. You can always check me out on Facebook too as Stephen O. Young. Right. And that's where I get all, all my news is on Instagram. Check me out. Steven, thank you for coming on. This was a blast. Thank you so much, Elias. 
That's a wrap. That's a wrap, everybody. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening to the Man Cave Chronicles podcast. I finally get my man cave. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the MCC Podcast. And our website, themccpodcast.com. Until next time. Until next time.